Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Transportation Nation Network. I have partnered with them to bring you the best in trucking entertainment and trucking news on the web. Go to their website, transportationnation.com, and you will find that it is your one-stop shop for everything trucking. There's a lot of great trucking shows and entertainment there as well. I encourage you to go, sign up on their website, and subscribe to their shows so you don't miss any. I hope to see you there. Link is down below in the description. Good morning, Internet world. We, we are in the U.S. of A. Just crossed into North Dakota, USA from Manitoba, Canada. And I had to do some real clever work with my axles to get the weights all legal. My whole unit right now with a gross weight with the fuel I have in my tanks is exactly 80,000 pounds. Very close to exactly 80,000 pounds. That's my max gross weight. Now to get that weight evenly spread across my axles, I can only have 34,000 on the trailer, same thing on the drives and only 12,000 up on the steers in the front of the truck. Now to get that weight spread properly, it's not always easy on a flatbed because on our flatbeds you can't slide the axles on the trailer to move the weight around. You have to load the freight correctly and this freight wasn't exactly loaded carefully. They loaded it too far forward on the trailer which put too much weight on my drives. I was quite a bit over on my drives but I was quite a bit under on my steers because my fifth wheel was all the way at the back. It's been there for a while. That's just how it's always worked best for me. So when you move your fifth wheel forward because they can move, right? When you move it forward, that moves weight off the back of your truck on your drives onto your steer tires in the front. And when you move it back, it's vice versa. It takes weight off your steers and puts that same weight onto your drives. So what I did was I had to move my fifth wheel all the way, well, not all the way forward. I moved it forward two notches. I moved it all the way forward at first to see what that would do. I was way overweight on my steers. It moves quite a bit of weight when you move your fifth wheel forward. I found that by moving it one notch, that moved 400 pounds. There's one notch, and I think there's what about six to ten notches. I don't know offhand right now. <laughs> you can move forward. So I finally got the weights perfect on the steers, 12,000 pounds. And then my drives were still a little overweight. They were about 150 pounds overweight. But my trailer was 150 pounds underweight. I was looking at this, hmm. and another driver was there. A, a guy I know actually, I run into him all the time. Uh, pulls the same stuff that I do. And he said, he looked at my load, he said, well, you have all your tarps at the front of your trailer. What if you move your tarps to the back of the trailer? Because those you can just pick up and move, right? So I did that. Turns out my tarps are 150 pounds. A little over, I think. Uh, about exactly 150 pounds. By moving my tarps from the front of the trailer to the back, I balanced out my, my load at 34,000 in the back, 34,000 on my drives, 34, I mean 12,000 on my steer. Just exactly, I've never been this perfect weight-wise. I'm ready for any scale that's open. They're gonna, they're gonna take a double take, I know, because I am pretty much right on the button. And I got a certified scale ticket to prove it. I have never been this exact on weight. But, but the thing is though, by the time I get to a scale down in Moorhead, Minnesota, that's about three hours down the road, I will have burnt over 100 liters already. So, I'll be 100 liters. Well, each gallon, US gallon, is seven pounds. So I can't do the math in my head right now, but it's about 25 gallons is what I'll burn from here to there, I believe. Can't do the math right now. Either way, that was my morning. Shifting weight around, moving fifth wheels. Moving fifth wheels are not fun, especially when that fifth wheel hasn't been moved in like probably five years. It was all almost seized up, but I got it working. Had to bang on it a bit with a hammer, but we got her working. And now we're sitting pretty. Come at me, DOT, I'm ready for you. You got nothing on me. Close, you got nothing. We haven't even got the Grand Forks yet, so we're not too far down the road. Apparently there's a big snowstorm I'm headed into. My dad is in it right now. He's in Wisconsin and he's stuck there. And the I-94 going through where he is, nearby there anyways, is closed. Apparently it's pretty bad. Fargo, North Dakota, just south of me here, straight ahead. 
a couple of hours. It's apparently supposed to get up to 30 centimeters of snow or a foot of snow today. And we got to get all the way down to Chicago. We're going right through the thick of it. I've seen uh, webcam footage from the traffic cams near Minneapolis. It looks pretty bad. Fargo is still doing all right, but the snow is coming this way. Wisconsin is practically shut down in northern Wisconsin, so I don't know how far we're going to get today, but I don't know if we're going to be able to deliver this freight tomorrow on Friday, which means I'm probably going to be sitting around in Chicago until Monday morning, which is a bummer. I couldn't get going any earlier yesterday. I was really trying hard all day. We had our doctor's appointment there, and then right after that, we rushed home and tried to get the truck ready as quickly as possible. And by the time I got to the yard, get hooked up, tie the load down, and then I had that problem with the weights, right? My, I was way overweight in the front, and I had to move all the weight around and move my fifth wheel, uh, and then go and scale it. So it, it took a while to get going, and uh, this is as far as we could get. And now I'm just rushing as fast as I can. Like not really paying attention to fuel economy today, I'm paying attention to time because I don't have a lot of time to get there. So I'm pedal the metal as fast as this truck will let me go, which is about 65 miles an hour, not even 63. So 65, something like that. And as little stops as possible. We need to get there. I'm trying to get unloaded tomorrow, but even if I get unloaded tomorrow, Friday afternoon, I'm still not going to be able to get a reload until Monday morning. But if I can get re unloaded, maybe I can head towards where my reload will be. Maybe it'll be in Indiana, maybe it'll be back in Minnesota or Wisconsin. At least then I can spend Saturday getting to where I'm going to reload, right? I get a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, either way, we're going to hit some snow today. Look at all this water here, yeah, yeah that's all headed up to Manitoba. We're rolling through Grand Forks here, and so far, so good. Weather is still all right, but all of the DOT road signs along the side of the road have been telling me that the I-29 is closed at Fargo, going south to South Dakota. Now, I'm taking the turn to go towards Minnesota. And so far, I haven't seen any signs that say that that highway is closed, but I'm guessing if the highway to South Dakota is closed, there's a good chance that the highway to Minneapolis is probably gonna be pretty bad as well. I mean, it depends. Maybe the worst of the storm is further south and further east, it's a little better. I don't know, there's only one way to find out. And we're doing it. We're just gonna give her, we're just gonna go in, hammer down. Hopefully, 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 we miss the worst of it. Uh-oh. I don't know if you can see it yet, but up ahead, visibility is getting worse. It's probably about a mile or two in front of us. There's something blocking the scenery out there. You can see that there's a white substance in the air between me and those trees about two miles from here. That can only mean one thing. We are about to hit the snow. It's about a mile in front of us here right now, just on the other side of that overpass. I've already prepared my windshield for the snow and I have been keeping my defrost off. I've been keeping the warm air away from my windshield so that my windshield stays cool. What that does is when the snow hits it, it bounces off instead of melting and sticking to it and then sticking to my wipers. So this way I don't gotta use my wipers. All the snow just goes around and here it is. Can you see it already? Oops, <laughs> I bumped my wipers, didn't mean to do that. Here's the snow, just like they promised. Oh, and it gets windy right away too, oh boy. still melting to my windshield. Why is my windshield warm? It's not good. Maybe you crack my windows a little bit to get some of that warm air out of here. I've seen some pictures of the road up ahead and eh, it doesn't look too good.
April 2019, Fargo, North Dakota. Lovely, isn't it? Don't you just love April? I was, I, I love springtime. Such a nice season. So nice to have springtime after winter, you know? This is ridiculous. In 1.7 kilometers, take exit 63 in B, on right, to I-94 East, then keep left. I don't know where the lanes are. I don't think this guy knows where the lanes are. There's people in the ditch all over the place. They closed down the highway between Fargo and Grand Forks, going the other direction, so it's... I just got through. Some kind of flashing lights over there. Someone's in the ditch. Trucks in the ditch, cars, everybody's in the ditch. Ay, ay, ay. Big truck in the ditch, a car hauler hit the ditch over there to the right. My cold windshield theory isn't working this time, so I have to use my wipers anyway. to think I was going to take the winter tires off my wife's vehicle this weekend. Then again, it isn't snowing up in Canada. This is only down here in the U.S. We don't got any snow up there anymore. We're just a little bit left over from the winter, but we didn't get any of this snowfall. This is ridiculous. Looks like I'm going to be sitting all weekend. There's no way I can get to Chicago now. Ugh. It is what it is. Take exit 63 in B on right to I 94 East, then keep left. Where is this exit, Mandy? I don't, all I see is white. It's supposed to get better further east, but if it doesn't get any better than this soon, I'm pulling it off the road and calling it quits. east towards Minneapolis. I know that the highway is closed going south, like straight ahead, but okay, I have no idea where the road is here. Oh my. Keep left to I-94 east. Can you guys tell where the road is? We might not even get out of Minneapolis. I might just go to the rest area outside of town here. This is crazy. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh boy, lots of ice underneath there. Wow. Where are the snow plows? Why is there a foot of snow here on the road? This is this is North Dakota. Don't they have snow plows? They must have fallen so fast that they can't keep up with it. Yikes. Fun times. These are the days when I love my job the most, you know? <laughs> I actually don't mind this. It doesn't bother me too much. I don't get stressed out by driving very easily. This is just another day in the life. This is what I, this is what I do. This is who I am. If I got stressed out over every little situation on the road, well, this job wouldn't be for me then. Just a little weather and a little wind. It's only temporary. It'll go away. Well, good news, as you can see, the weather is clearing up. The roads, roads are still pretty icy. Oh, and is this on ramp closed? Wait, what? So what? I can't get back on the highway from here? Really? Well, why did I exit the highway then? Oh, fantastic. All right, well, I was just stopping here for a coffee at the Tessero, and apparently I'm not gonna be able to get back on the highway. Oh, come on. If I would've known that, I wouldn't have left the highway. It looks pretty packed here at this truck stop. Ah, oh, great. Shoot. 
Well, we might be stuck here for a little while now. Should have stayed on the highway. It wasn't even that bad. Yeah, the highway's closed here too. Huh. Well, what do you know? What do you know? Okay, well, I'm gonna hang out here for a bit. Hopefully we can find a decent parking spot. Lots of trucks here, I bet. Well, I wonder why they would only have closed it here. Like, there was no signs along the road that it was closed, that I had to get off the highway. I, I left the highway because I wanted to, because I wanted a coffee. How am I going to know when it's good to go again? Man, can you see all these trucks off to the right? That is insane. Yikes. Oh man, I wanted to get a lot further than this. Let's see if I can find a spot to park. Oh, the spot's here off to my right. I can back in there, turn around and back in there. What a ridiculous mess. Hey, Chevy. What a mess. Oh, we were snowed in all night. They just reopened the highway. Everyone's trying to get out of here right now. And every single person, myself included, was stuck. I have 80,000 pounds on me. I thought, oh, no way. I'm not going to be stuck. I'll just be able to pull it right on out of here like a tank. No. Nope. Apparently, because of all the, the moisture on the ground, the ground had already thawed, because it's already springtime. It's not supposed to be wintertime right now. The ground had already thawed, so the snow just made it even softer. So everybody just sunk right into the soft sand, or the soft parking lot. And even if there's no snow around your truck, everybody was stuck because they were all sunk in, including my So I just got pulled out by uh, a very nice guy who was clearing the snow here with a John Deere tractor. He's around here somewhere. But he's been pulling everybody out. He's got a chain with him and he's been going from truck to truck pulling everybody out. <laughs> I guess it's in his own interest to get us out of here so he can clear the yard, but what a mess. So it's the next day. We're gonna continue this on tomorrow's vlog. I hope you tune in. I don't have to be in Chicago till Monday now and it's Friday and I have one day to get, like it's a one day drive from here. So we'll be there, like we could be there tonight and we have Saturday and Sunday just to sit around, hang out. I'm probably gonna stop somewhere with a gym. I might go to Mauston to the quick trip there and stay there because I know that there's a uh, truck parking there and I know there's a gym right across the street that I can go and spend my time at tomorrow and on Sunday. Then we'll make our way in there for Sunday night, unload Monday morning and continue on there. We're gonna truck hard for the rest of the month. We have to, we have to get some miles behind us now. We have to get some loads delivered. So thanks for watching. It was a miserable kind of day, but trucking, right? Every day is a miserable kind of day if you want it to be. You just gotta want it to be a good day. So it's gonna be a good day today. You'll have to tune in tomorrow to see it. Take care and I'll see you then. Chevy, say goodbye. Whoa, look at all the people. There was a dog there, wasn't there, in that truck? There's a dog that just got in there. You are so different than Diesel, you know? Diesel would be barking up a storm. You just sit there and stare at them. They're beautiful, man. Beautiful. I know. Chevy's still discovering that there's a whole world outside our property. It's like he's on another planet every day. Wow! Look at that over there! Look at that over there! Whoa! Do you see that? Look, there's another dog. No way, I thought I was the only dog. Because Diesel and Frankie aren't dogs. <laughs> it's true, Diesel and Frankie are not dogs. They are little hairy humans. They don't act like dogs. But Chevy does. All right, Chev. You want to say bye to everybody? We're going to go and sit near Chicago? Yeah, we're going to go sit?